In this video, I'll be looking at a new modification to help keep your Nikon Z8 running a bit cool and hopefully avoid those dreaded hot card warnings. Now, the mad part is I'm actually holding the modification in my hand right now. And no, it is not a cooling fan or isn't even remotely like it. This modification could in theory seriously help your Nikon Z8 not only run cooler, but also help it recover from strenuous activities like shooting in high frames per second burst mode or shooting 8K 60p analog videos for prolonged periods of time. This is the modification I'll be adding, or should I say, changing on the camera. This is a piece of anodized aluminum which has been designed to exactly replace the plastic part here on the base of the camera itself. Now the key to success here is understanding how your Nikon Z8 is built and seeing how the heatsink is positioned in your camera body. If you saw my first video on how to keep your Nikon Z8 running cool, you will have seen the stripped down photographs that show the heatsink being directly above this original plastic part. The aim here is to change out that plastic part for a superconductive metal part and to suck the heat out of the camera body to help keep it cool. So come on, let's get into it and see how easy it is to fit this Nikon Z8 hot card modification. Before I go any further, let's have a quick look at this piece and the immense detail a Facebook friend of mine has got into to actually design this. And you can only just imagine how many countless hours he spent measuring and remeasuring this, never mind to fabricate it to such a perfect level. So well done to my friend, Kathleen. Um, I think that's how I pronounce your name. I'm really sorry if I got that right. It's C-A-T-A-L-I-N as far as I know, so it's Catalin. He's, um, he's a photographer, he's based in Romania. Now if you want to get this modification piece yourself, then you can email Catalin directly yourself. I will leave his details in the description below. Now I should also say I paid for this part myself and I was very happy to do so. I have no affiliation whatsoever with Catalin other than simply being friends with him on Facebook. I'm just like you, I just want to keep my Nikon Z8 running as cool as I possibly can and avoid those hot card warnings. Now this modification is not endorsed by Nikon and you do it at your own risk, but it's super simple to do. Just simply unscrew eight screws, pop it on and screw them back on long and away we go. If you connect a camera cage, this will act as an extended heat sink with a larger surface area, it's gonna help dissipate the heat even more so that's going to really help cool your camera and it's going to help suck the heat out of the camera body even faster so it means your camera will be able to recover quicker. So before we fit this I'm going to test the camera first as it is in room temperature here now today and I'm going to be doing a lot of different tests. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fit my Nikon Z8 camera cage onto the actual camera itself and I'm going to test it with the back LCD just pulled out slightly. Again that's just one of the tips I found from my previous tests, which again, the video link for that is gonna be down below in the description. So please do check that out. Now, all these tests will be shot at 8K 60p in analog in high detail mode at ISO 4000. And the camera is going to be shooting moving subjects, continuously moving subjects. So it's gonna be really stressing the camera to the absolute max. The card I'm going to be using then is going to be a ProGrade Gen 4 512GB CF Express card. So that is going to be fast enough to be able to record the 8K 60p and because it's a Gen 4 card it's, all going to be, it's also going to be slightly more thermally efficient. It's also quite reasonably priced too as well. But um, yeah, so that's basically, but it's going to be the same card, the same settings for all my tests. So it really doesn't matter because this is going to show us how much of a percentage increase we got if we got anything at all. So on my very first test, I got a hot card warning at 13 minutes and 56 seconds at room temperature, which is roughly around 21 degrees here at the moment. I let the camera cool down for four hours and re-ran the tests with a hot card warning coming up at 14 minutes and 12 seconds this time around. I continued my tests and they averaged roughly around 14 minutes, give or take 20 seconds either way. 
Next, I did something a small bit different because I wanted to see how quickly the camera could recover from the hot card warning. So I let the camera rest for just 20 minutes after the hot card warning came up and I shot the test again, same settings. And this time around, it lasted for 10 minutes and 30 seconds. So I let it rest again for another 20 minutes and I redid, ex redid exactly the same test again. And this time it lasted for 10 minutes and 12 seconds. But I had to put a fresh battery in before I started this test. So that could have added another 10 seconds to the time maybe because the new battery was obviously cooler. I let it rest again for another 20 minutes and redid the test. And this time it lasted for nine minutes and 38 seconds. So as you can see, our time is getting shorter and shorter. The more we do this, as heat is really starting to build up in the camera body now. So let's fit the part and see if it makes any difference. I'll be sharing thermal scans also when I have both tests done so you can directly compare the two of them side by side and we can see how much heat exactly is being kicked out of the camera by this new metal plate. Now, um, before I fit the modification, I want to add that I had one other concern about this and that was how it would affect the weather sealing of the Z8. So I asked Catalin, this and he said it fits the rubber wedding, weather sealing exactly like the plastic piece did. And as it's metal, it should flex less. So in theory, it could have even better weather sealing. So come on, let's, let's strip this bad boy open and see what's involved in swapping it over. So here we have the metal piece and the original plastic piece fitted. So to take the original plastic piece off, we need to open these eight screws. Now there are two different sizes of screws here. The two screws on the left, as I'm opening them here, are the shorter ones. And the two screws on the far right are the same length. So that leaves the four screws towards the center as the longer screws then. Now looking at the two case parts here, the metal part does look not only sturdier, but it really feels like this could help your camera stay very cool also. When I pop the new metal piece in place, it looks every bit as good as the original. There is little to no difference apart from the anti-twist secondary pin position, which isn't in the metal plate. The next part now is applying the terminal paste to help the metal piece connect and help to transfer heat between them. Less is generally more with terminal paste, so I started with a very light coat. I use the spatula to spread it thinly across the points. And here is what version one of the finished piece looked like. I perfected this later on though and found a better way of laying out the thermal paste. So just popping the metal plate back on now and doesn't that look really well. It really looks every bit as good as the original. The original plastic part was insulating the camera from the external air and your camera cage or L bracket or even your tripod plate whereas the new metal part is now helping to connect it to the cooler outside air. So this is my Z8 cage, and I put 0.5 mm thermal pads along the base of the cage's plate, and remove the rubber pad around the tripod mount, and fill the hole with thermal pads to help transfer heat away from the camera again. So during the first test, which I have to say I found a few problems with afterwards, I was slightly disappointed with the new metal base on the Nikon Z8 and the thermal pads I'd fitted in the camera cage as I got a time of 15 minutes and 20 seconds. So it did extend the time of the hot card warning by roughly one minute and 20 seconds, but that's only about an 8% longer recording time without a hot card warning. That's not as much as I'd hoped for, but I hadn't gotten it right just yet. The second test I did then after six hours of cooling down and adding a bit more thermal compound in the correct places brought the time up to 16 minutes and eight seconds. So I let it cool down again for another six hours and I got a time of 15 minutes and 53 seconds. I next tried the stress test where I only let the camera cool down for 20 minutes to see if it cooled the camera down faster than having the traditional plastic base fitted. And this is where I hoped there would be a bigger difference. The first test after a 20 minute break reached 10 minutes and 28 seconds of a recording. 
the second 20 minute break reached 10 minutes and 24 seconds until I got that hot card warning again. So it clearly did help keep the camera cool and get the heat out as the times were really dropping. So that's a positive, but I still wasn't happy. Then I opened the camera and I had a look at what parts were getting really hot when the hot card warning came on. And as you can see from the thermal image here, it was the large screw points deep in the camera that got really hot. And that's where the real heat was coming from in the camera. So what I decided to do was I put a bit more thermal compound on the treads of the screws and I also put more thermal paste on the chassis to the left and the right of the tripod mounting place, plate and this is where I noticed a bigger difference. On my next test I got a time of 17 minutes and 13 seconds on the first recording and this was a nice difference over the 14 minutes with the default camera base fitted. So that's approximately 25% of an increase with the modification fitted. So now we're finally getting places and you can see why this is important. I let the camera cool down for 20 minutes again and redid the test with it reaching 10 minutes and 55 seconds on the second test, which is close enough to my original test results with the plastic part. And that surprised me. The one thing I did notice here though is that the camera cage itself was now getting warmer than it used to get with the plastic part fitted. This all means the heat is obviously being sucked out of the camera more now, which is a serious positive. On my next test, after waiting 20 minutes again for the camera to cool down, it made it to 11 minutes and 15 seconds. Now, the thing you have to remember here in all this is, the camera was actually sitting on this felt pad I have on my desk, so the base was actually isolated as such. So I thought to myself, for the next 20 minute test, I'm gonna try something different. And I mounted it on a tripod as soon as I started recording. And I got a time of 11 minutes and 21 seconds which is an increase in recording time, which is not what I was expecting. So in the next 20 minute stress test, I had the Z8 on the tripod while it was actually cooling down. And for that recording, it lasted for 11 minutes and 59 seconds, which again is a further extension of the recording time. And that's over two minutes of a time increase compared to the non-modified test results. So again, that's a nice bonus. Now, these test results are in my control settings here with my card and you could very well get different results where you are, which is why I'm concentrating more on the percentage increase rather than the time increase. In my far more detailed initial Nikon Z8 cooling video, I talked about the HDMI port and the USB ports and how they seem to be getting really hot, as you can see here with the covers on. Now a little side tip for you here is to connect a HDMI and two USB-C cables, even if you don't use them, as they also help to get the heat out of the camera body and should help the camera recover. So I had a thought, if the heat is getting out faster and if 4K recording on the Nikon Z8 cooks or kind of heats up the camera at a slower rate, then how long would a standard 4K test run for without a hot card warning? So I set my camera to 4K 30p to simulate a normal recording Again, after a six hour cool down period, I put a fresh battery into it and I set it recording. Now crazily, Z8 ran for an hour and 15 minutes before the card was actually filled. So I quickly went into the menu, formatted the card and set it back recording again. And the camera continued to record for another 25 minutes and 19 seconds until the camera shut off because the battery died but there was still no hot card warning it. Monitoring the temperature on the camera, the camera was still running fairly cool. It was nowhere near hitting that hot card warning zone. So as far as I'm concerned, I would think you could easily run that for another 30 minutes in these conditions. So that is two hours of 4K 30p recording without any hot card warning coming up on the camera in my situation here. So for me, I said, look, that's definitely going to work perfectly for me every single time. Once you start with 8K 60p though, like I did in most of these tests, 
you will run into issues after a while. But again, a different card might help there. And of course, lower ambient temperatures in the room will also seriously help. Now, I also ordered a dummy battery from Noor for the Nikon Z8. It's supposed to be arriving today. It's actually going to arrive in the next 20, 30 minutes, I believe. So I'm going to be trying that too as well to see is that going to make any bit of a difference to help keep the camera a small bit cool, cooler because the camera battery does also generate heat as it's being discharged inside in the Z8 itself. So that could be contributing to the heat buildup. So that's going to be an interesting one. And just as I say that it's going to be arriving today, <laughs> I heard a van pull up outside. So I stopped the recording and here it is. So this is the dummy battery for the Nikon Z8. I'm just going to pop it open here now and have a quick look. But uh, this is supposed to work beautifully in the Z8. Uh, so pull this out and have a look and see. So yeah, that's the battery itself. And here is the D-tap connection on the end. Oh, there's actually a clip on that. So. Yeah, D-tap to an EN-EL15C battery. So I'm just gonna grab my V-mount battery and just make sure it works now as we're at it. Just to pop the battery into the camera itself, I'm gonna slide that in. And then on the bottom here, there's a small little door down here. So the actual cable can stick out the side and it can leave it like that. And what I can do is just plug this into the D-tap connection on the battery. And I'm gonna switch this on now. And there we go. That's the camera on working. So the Nikon Z8 working via V-mount battery, via a dummy battery connection. So that works beautifully by the looks of things. And um, yeah, really interested to see how that goes. Just a pity it didn't arrive yesterday. So I could have put the test results into this video too as well. So here we have the proof in the thermal images and they are side by side now with the original plastic based images to the left and the modified metal based images to the right. They were recorded after one hot card warning was reached. I then switched off the camera and took it out of the cage and measured the temperatures on the base plate. The white arrow indicates the temperature of 32.9 degrees Celsius on the plastic part and the metal part then on the right shows 40.2 degrees. So you can see there is a big difference there already and the metal plate is going to suck a lot more heat out of your Nikon Z8. Looking at the camera cage temperatures after a hot card warning and the base is at 27 degrees on the plastic one and 30.9 degrees on the metal one. On the side of the camera cage, you could see the temperatures again differ dramatically. And I record temperatures of over 33 degrees at this point on the cage with the metal base installed, of course. Again, at the top of the cage, there is over four degrees of a difference. So the cage is actually acting as a large heat sink for the camera. You could clearly see the tripod head is starting to heat up here now too with the modification installed. This happened with a camera cage fitted, an L bracket and just a tripod quick release plate installed. As I mentioned in the video, connecting USB-C cables and HDMI cables also help to remove heat from the camera body as you can see here by the temperatures recorded on the cables themselves. Finally, this is the camera cage after four stress tests in a row and you can see it really is heating up the cage completely. So here you can see the final image of the thermal paste and I went a lot more liberal with the thermal paste here, especially to the left and right of the camera base itself because I really wanted to connect to the chassis and around the tripod mount and also to the hotspot just to the top left of center that we found with the thermal image scan. And yes, a different card might yield different results, but the point of this test is to see how the modification would, would, how, how it would impact on the heat buildup in the camera. Now, I'm going to be continuing these tests and I plan on modifying the USB and HDMI cooling system too as well to see if I can get it running for 20 minutes without overheating and to get it recover even faster and get longer recording times after the 20 minute break. So if you have any thoughts or ideas, I would absolutely love to hear how you're helping to keep your Nikon Z8 running cool. Or is there something else out there, some little trick out there I've missed. And if you'd like to see part three, please do let me know. And also don't forget to like, comment and share on this video because it really helps to get this content out there and it might help someone else cool down their Nikon Z8. So um, thanks again for watching and see you out there.